welcome to the 2011 AM and Junior Worlds PDGA Daily Report. Liz, we're going to be here all week long showing these guys everything. I mean, from players to action to all the extracurricular events going on. Oh, yeah. On. We're going to check out a couple different courses. These are really neat courses. I know that everybody wants to see what they look like. Well, there's a lot going on all week. This is Sunday. This is going to be the doubles. We're going to crown four world champions today. And we really don't start a competition, singles competition, until Tuesday. So it's going to be great for somebody to get a world championship under their belt right off the bat. Oh, yeah. It's going to feel easy for them going into this week's competition. Well, first off, we're going to go over and we're going to look at one of the courses. This is a got to go course look. Liz, I believe you were over at Parma and let's just go see what you had to say. All right. Okay, we've arrived at Parma Park. Looks to be a big open piece of property behind me. Let's go check out what she's got in store. A challenging hole. It's 269 feet long. It's straight. However, players are going to have to avoid a large pond at the far part of the fairway. It's going to take all of 240 feet to clear the water's edge. Be careful because it's a very well defined pond. Hole number three brings us to another very technical hole. There are a couple of different lines. The green, however, is very guarded no matter which line you pick. Hole number three of Parma, technical, maybe even a lucky shot will get you down here. Okay, well, in the hole number six at Parma Park, no shortness of difficulty on this hole. It's 333 feet. They're calling it a par three. There's a few different lines you could take off the tee, but you have to be aware of the OB Creek that runs down the left side of the fairway, but to make it to the green, you're definitely going to have to challenge that airspace. Okay, we've reached hole number nine, a very beautiful hole. It is downhill, par three. I'd say it's down about 20 feet, but as you throw it, the green is very guarded, very beautiful green. You do want to make it over the creek to land on the green. Hole number 10 at Parma, beautiful hole, back in the woods. We're throwing over a valley here, typical mid-range, maybe even a putter shot. A little bit narrow in the middle. You want to penetrate through that gap and make it all the way to the other side to a slightly guarded green, but land anywhere in front of the basket and you'll be able to run your putt. Okay, we made it to hole number 12. Another tight, tight shot off the tee pad. There's a couple obstacles you have to keep in mind here. You can throw a nice big safety shot out into the open field, but you do have to be aware that the tall grass here is going to play OB. Once you make it into the open field, your second shot is a technical shot. It's going to go left or right, and it is shooting a very small gap, maybe a 20-foot gap to get inside of that green. Number 16 at Parma Park is a downhill shot with a very demanding angle that you have to take left to right. Distance is 235. It's not going to play like that, though, with a huge drop in elevation. There's a stream all the way along the left side of the fairway. Be careful not to hit a tree and get ricocheted over that stream. All right, we've made it to hole 18, our final hole here at Parma Park. It is 455 feet. It's pretty open. You've got a few obstacles along the right, very thick, thick patches of shul down near the very open green. It does slope a little bit off the backside, so be careful of your second shot. Okay, there it is. You have now seen Parma Park in Rochester, New York one of the courses being used for the 2011 PDGA Amateur World Championships. This course has a little bit of everything. There's some really tight technical small holes. However, there are some tight technical long holes too. A few times you get to open up that arm, but more often than not, you're gonna be faced with some challenging shots. Well, the 2011 AM and Junior Worlds have started here in Rochester, New York beautiful day for these guys to compete, Liz. Oh, absolutely. It's mild. It's temperate. I think everybody's out here to have a good time. Well, we started this morning over at Best Shot, 
over at Basil Morella. And that was a really tight track. and Lots of trees, lots of trees, technical. Well, we'll see what happens because this afternoon we had three, I believe, what they scored this morning, three groups? Three groups scoring seven down, shooting 49. Well, we're going to pick up the lead card and bring it home for you. We're on hole 16. They should be coming down the path now. This is the mixed doubles advanced division, and we'll see who the next world champions will be. Well, you can see Parma is a beautiful piece of land, and playing alternate doubles this afternoon, anything could happen. Now, let's go over to Liz, as she was able to run down the TV of this event amidst everything going on. Hi, I'm Liz Carr with Clash DVD, and I've been able to kidnap the tournament director for this year's World Championships. Tony and Zana, how are things going this week? Good, Liz. Thanks for having, thanks for coming, and thanks for sh being here to videotape this wonderful event. Awesome. Well, we're glad you're heading it up. It's a great thing that you're doing. How are things going? Are you kind of going crazy trying to get everything together? Uh, I am. I'm going crazy. It's uh, it's been a whirlwind of events. I've lost all of my hair, <laughs> and uh, I, so I don't have any more hair to pull out. So we have to run with it as we are and well, hopefully it, everything will run smoothly. You know, it seems like everybody's happy. Everybody's getting checked in right now. We're going to go through the progression of the week. I know cor players are all going to get a chance to experience different courses. Can you tell us a little bit about each course? Sure. We're using six courses here in Rochester. Um, one of our highlight courses is our Chai Lai course. That course was featured in the 1999 Pro World Championships now, finale. That course changed names, didn't it? Yes. The, 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 the course is still the Chai Lai Disc golf course, but it is now in what they call Widener Park. Well, I've it seen was. it. It is beautiful. What, what are some of the other courses out there? We have uh, Churchville, of uh, course, which is a Monroe County Parks course, which we've recently redesigned and just put in fly pads for the event. Oh, very and good. And that's going to be a really nice course. Uh, we have four or five rounds there that this week. Uh, we also have uh, our course Parma in Parma, New York, which is one of our other jewels. Uh, Parma, our, I've heard there's a lot of out of bounds there. Yeah, one of our longest courses. Uh, um, and uh, it's truly the uh, course in Rochester that has a little bit of everything. We have some open fairways, we have woods, we have elevation. Some water maybe even comes water. in play. Yep, yeah, it's a wonderful course. Uh, we have Basil Morella, uh, which has been in the ground for many years, and we've spent about two or three years trying to clean it out for everybody. But having said that, uh, every hole is in the woods, so you have to keep yourself straight and narrow on the fairway. Every Tight every, and technical every hole, I, is what I technical, see. But it's a sure. beautiful course. We also have Genesee Valley, which is a temporary course. This is the site of our original disc golf course, and also it was one of our places where we had a temporary course for the 1999 Worlds. And uh, that's a bigger, more open course, is it from is what I see? It is a bigger, more open course, uh, but we've made it very technical because we are using and utilizing the water, and we're using the walk paths, and yeah. so we have a tremendous amount of OBs, and people, again, are going to need to keep it straight and narrow. Okay. Um, and and then we have Ellison Park, which is a very, very famous course for us in Rochester. It's been around for over 25 years, and it's our hilly course with some beautiful ups and downs, the hills and terrain in Rochester here. Well, that's great. I know that all the players are really looking forward to getting out there and, and practice those courses, getting ready for the 2011 Amateur and Junior World Championships. Absolutely. So, Tony, I know that you have a bunch of other activities planned for these players this week, kind of keep them involved with what's going on. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the other events? Events they'll be able to participate in. Sure, we uh, we made special effort this year to try to keep everything centrally located. So we have our main host hotel, the Radisson downtown, and we have uh, different events every night. Um, tonight uh, we have an event uh, at one of our local establishments. We have what what establishment is that? It's called the Keg, uh, okay. and we have three bands playing this evening. One of the bands has a disc golfer as one of their band members, and so we are offering discounts for all of the disc golfers that are coming in to go enjoy that entertainment. Uh, we have our field events tomorrow at Genesee Valley Park and we are filled with events, both events that people signed up for as well as some free special events sponsored by Vibram oh, and Innova and Discraft. And all the players events. are welcome at these events. And all the players are welcome spectators at Spectators as well. And spectators. Oh, Absolutely. very good. Very good. So is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about the field events? Uh, we have some special people helping us with the field events this year. Um, two of my very good friends from Florida, Johnny McCray 
McRae and Garrett Gerthy are here to help run the field events. Uh, Johnny McRae uh, is a, uh, one of our top players in the world, sponsored by Gateway, is going to be running our putting contest at the field events, and he's also going to be having a putting clinic during the field event day. All right, so and we've then, got a good putter to help us absolutely. out. Absolutely, and then we have Garrett Gerthy here, who is going to be helping running the long distance competition and is also going to be running a long distance demonstration during the field events. Driving and putting, you got two of the best. Absolutely. Very grateful to have my friends here from Florida, top pros, taking their time out of their schedule uh, to come and help with the AM Worlds with the amateurs. Absolutely. So. I know we're all really excited to see what they have to show us. Absolutely. The, did I hear the players party is going to be amazing this year. Can you tell us about yes, that? Yes. The players party is going to be at Frontier Field, our International League Baseball Stadium. We have the entire stadium. Uh, wow. The entire ourselves. stadium. Yes. We're, we're having a... Are we allowed to throw once we get inside? We, we, we are. We're going to be having a long distance demonstration, hopefully watching Garrett Gerthy throw from home plate out of center field. Uh, we, we also are going to have a, uh, a couple different uh, company-led competitions by Gateway and Discraft. Oh, and, very good. Uh, we have an uh, hour and a half buffet with barbecue, open bar for the first hour, and uh, hopefully we're going to get a lot of people to come in and enjoy the player party. Oh, that'll be a lot of fun. How about the final day? The final nine. The final nine is at our course at MCC, Monroe Community College. This is actually a temporary nine-hole course that no one has seen, and we oh, will be exciting. unveiling it Saturday morning. Oh, uh, it's boy. not part of the traditional Monroe Community College course, which we're not using for the Worlds. But again, it's around the actual campus of Monroe Community College. Oh, I can, well, be a really we can't wait. Well, it sounds like it'll be a good event for spectators to come and see Absolutely. this big open course. Absolutely. All right, are there any other events you'd like to mention? Yes. Um, on Wednesday night, which is the great shuffle when the pools are switched after the first three rounds of the event, uh, we have a sponsor, Night Eyes, and we have uh, another sponsor called the Stock Exchange, which is directly across the river ah. from the hotel, and we're going to be setting up a, a Night Eyes mini golf course. Now, from Night Eyes, what is that? Are night we going to be able is, to see them at night? Yes, they're, they're glow minis, and we're going to have mini golf baskets out oh, there. Oh, very cool. And uh, we're going to have a course set up from the hotel to the Stock Exchange, and they're going to have a whole whole bunch of events at the Stock Exchange for the disc golfers. On Thursday night, we have a local um, concert sponsored by Party in the Park, which is right down walking distance from the hotel. We have a band called Big Gigantic from Colorado that's going to be playing, and, the, and we're going to be having a, a booth, and we're going to be sponsored there at the player cool. at the Party in the Park. Uh, we also have, at the end of the field events, uh, Steve Dodge from Vibram is going to be putting on a promotion and he's going to be having a little pizza party uh, after oh, pizza. his promotion. Well, all right, Mr. Tony Anzana, director of your 2011 PDGA Amateur and Junior World Championships here in Rochester, New York. I think it's time you better get back to work. They're going to be lost without you. Yes, thank you, Liz. I appreciate it. We appreciate everything. your time. Thank you. All right, I'm Liz with Clash DVD. Make sure you watch us all week long on the PDGA.com for daily updates and coverage. Thank you. Okay, let's go check out some action from this morning's round at Basil Park with our juniors. Well, we're going to pick up the lead card and bring it home for you. We're on hole 16. They should be coming down the path now. This is the mixed doubles advanced division, and we'll see who the next world champions will be. This is the first day's competition, Liz, and we're with the juniors doubles. This is hole number 15. We're at Basil Park. Basil Mariella, is that correct? Yeah, it's Basil Mar Mar Mariella, actually, and it's a very tight technical course. Well, this is 255. This is really dangerous. There's oh, water yeah. behind the green. I mean, right off the right off the tee pad, he's looking at an eight foot gap. Then he's gonna go to a 12 foot gap. Right now on the tee is Austin Kreiss. He's playing with his brother Skyler, his older brother. Oh, and Austin does not get the love there. Let's see if Big Brother can step up and maybe maybe save his back. All he's got to do is make it through two very small gaps to have a 
Well, you know, I, th I think it's awesome seeing the families out here. I mean, this is their family vacation. This oh, he is made it the through. aspect. He made it oh, it's a beautiful he's shot. Gonna, That's running me. for it. Oh, Ooh, he goes he, right over the basket. He almost caught it. He may have gone. That's going to go was, OB. Oh, no. That was such a good run, too. A beautiful shot, and everybody's loving it. But when they get down there, if they don't know the course, they're going to have to take Austin's, it looks like. Okay, we've got young Brock Dowell on the pad here. He's partners with Andrew. Oh, beautiful shot there, Liz. And he is, stays inbound, a little bit short of the green, a little bit left. Well, now coming up, young man, Andrew Coggins. Andrew is a four-time doubles champ, and this is his first event competing without his partner, Dave Wiggins. Andrew is also a oh, 10 and under. Like That's a beautiful trouble. shot. Right that needs to hit it. something. Oh, oh, and it did. It hit something. It, I, I'm going to say it stayed fair. We call that world champ love. Let's get down and see how they ended. There's Austin now. This is for big birdie and captain's choice doubles. Oh, a little bit high, but he's going to allow his older brother to really make that putt confidently and give it a good run. Well, I mean, that was... I mean, he's standing just outside the circle's edge. It's not an easy putt. Well, that was an ace run, though. I mean, he almost hit the flag. Oh, it looks like they had a tree to contend with, too. No birdies for this team. Well, you can see moving in now is the four-time doubles champ, Andrew Coggins, has parked this thing. Oh, Oh, yeah, his partner says, here you go, bud. I'll take care of this. Brock Dowell may be a good teammate. All right, there's an easy two for the Coggins team. Oh, they'll take the tee pad on that. We're going to stay with this group here at Basil Marella Park, and we're going to get over to number 17, another Cine Cole here. 2011 PDGA Am and Junior World Championship. This is the doubles. Well, we made our way to hole 17, and this is a sweet hole, 342 feet, par three. Oh yeah, and they can't get in any trouble early because they have to make it over this stream to even be considered in bounds. Well, it's a slight Anheuser. Here's Brock Dowell, and he's looking at a side on. Well, that's a good looking that's shot. That's a great there. shot. He's gonna have it. Oh, he got a little bit of trouble along about half, two thirds of the way up the fairway. Still a good shot, easy three from there. Well, I was telling you about Andrew Coggin. He's a four-time juniors double champ. He's a 10 and under world champion. He's got two world championships for 13 and under. He finished third in 13 and under, second last year in 16 and oh, under. Oh yeah, and he chose possibly a comet to throw here. That oh, is wow. a beautiful shot. He's, he's going to be up. right on the circle's edge looking at an uphill putt to a he, fast green. He's actually trying to become the first junior to win at all levels as a world champ. That is his goal. Okay, the Christ team here. This is Austin Christ. He is left-handed, so this is going to be an easy routine shot for him. Just needs one release. Oh, good kick there, but that's going to leave him short. He's about 50. Got to go uphill. Looking for big brother to pick him up. Let's see what you got, Skyler. Skyler almost a 16. Oh, yeah, it was a great shot. Seems like these boys are working really well oh, as a team. It, and it's not only the brother factor, but how about the left hand, right hand factor? What yeah. a good shot by Big that's Brother. That's a great combination. He's right up there on the circle's edge. I'd say that's the best drive out of all of them. Well, let's get down here and let you see one beautiful green here, number 17 at Basel Park. Okay, we've got everybody stepping up to the greens here. It looks like Coggins and Dowell are out. Well, he's about five feet behind that. 10 meter circle and he's up here. This is a challenging putt. Fast green too. Oh, sit down. He is lucky to stay safe. Now his partner can really give it a run. Well, I was hoping he'd, uh, he'd his last two putts had been high. Hoping he'd make that adjustment with the hill, but this is a steep hill. And now we'll see if Austin can pick up Big Brother's drive. They are just outside the circle, about four feet, Liz. Yeah, but they're playing uphill, so he's going to have a little bit more challenge. But again, he plays it safe. They're playing good as a team, Billy. Well, you got to like the left-handed, right-handed situation. Oh, yeah, and both these teams have great support from their parents. Oh, oh just a little so close. Right. Well, this is the first day here at the 2011 Amateur and Junior World Championships. These are the juniors. And we're going to get over now, and we're going to bring you some of the second round of this, and we're going to find the lead card of the mixed doubles. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting day, Billy. Now the world's is underway here, 2011 in Rochester, New York. 
Well, you can see those little guys are intense. And man, they've got skills, Liz. Oh, absolutely, Billy. They're really fun to watch, too. Well, I don't know how many world championships these guys are planning on getting, but between them, they've got like eight or nine already, and they're playing 16 and under. I, we should have asked them. I'm going to guess those guys are maybe 13 or so. If that, yeah. They've got plenty of time to stick it with this sport and gain some more world championship love. Well, we'll let you know what happens with the juniors. There's also 13 and under, 16 and under, which you saw some of, and 19 and under out there competing. Now, before we get back to some live action, thanks to Voodoo, we were able to get by the tournament hotel today, the Radisson, a beautiful place where everybody is having a ball. And what are we going to show them, Liz? Well, we're going to show everybody signing up. We're going to give you a little preview of the players pack, show you what the players are getting. And we're also going to take a look at the pro shop. Lots of cool stuff in there that you can check out. Well, thanks to Voodoo, here's a look at Tournament Central and how sign-in went today. Tournament Central. It's a happening place and everything they've got, you know, we talked to the TV earlier, it's all planned around the hotel. They're going to have a big week, playing good or not. Yeah, absolutely. They're, I mean, they're, they're giving away a little car there. <laughs> so, lots of cool <laughs> stuff going on. All right, you can feel the intensity build this week as we start crowning world champions. Now we're going to bring you something special. Let's go to the Clash DVD, meet the players. Hi, I'm Mickey Welling from Rochester, New York. PDA, PDGA numbers 27-7-32. Hey, I'm Michelle Fraser, PDGA number 24356, and I'm here from Morgantown, Indiana, with my mom and my dad and my two sisters who are pro who are just hanging out and cheering us on. <laughs> Jag heter Kai Larsson och är från Sverige och mitt PDA-nummer är 4759. Uh, my name is Rathal and PDG number is 29386 and I'm from Berlin, Iowa. Now we're going to get back out, Liz. Tell them what we got for them. Oh yeah, we're going to bring you some coverage of the last three holes that these mixed doubles groups had to go through. They're playing alternate shot at Parma and let me tell you, there's a couple holes that bring some drama. Yep. Here's the finals right now from the Mixed Doubles World Championships. Let's see who the world champion Mixed Doubles is for 2011. Well, we have just picked up the lead card, and we got a battle for the World Championship Mixed Doubles. Oh, yeah, we do. They're going back and forth, too, Billy. Well, Melinda Abton and Michael Falconio. Michael Falconio is a local, so he should have an advantage. They're sitting at plus two right now, coming into hole 16. Colleen Thompson, Ryan no. Gavlik, they're sitting at one over. They just doubled hole 15. And that is Melinda on the tee. And look at this, she's got a hook thumb right Oh, rocking. yeah, she does. Oh, it's a bad Oh, it's, it's trying to stay safe. I think it is safe. That's the marshal there, Robert Leonard. He's calling that safe, and that's a big break for them. Yeah, that's a huge break. We've seen a lot of people go OB here, Billy. Now here's a big advantage, I would say, on a tough hole like this. She didn't feel like she could reach it, obviously, throwing the hooks on. This is Ryan Gavlin. He played for the University of Western Illinois last year. 
They had a really good finish at the Collegiate Championships. He's choosing to go backhand. He's definitely on the right side. side and tight. You know, that's not bad. He's going to stay safe. He's going to have a little bit of trouble to deal with. He's, he's answered the call. Well, this is alternate shot, and Michael's left a tough shot for Melinda, and Colleen has put Ryan in a decent spot. We'll see if they can get up and down. We're going to bring it home. This is number 16, 235 feet from Parma. All right, we're on the approach shot for Michael, Michael Falconio. Oh, he's got him on left-handed side arm. This could work if he's got a hole. Yeah, you know, he doesn't have very far to go, but it has a specific line it has to take. If it's up in the air, oh, it stopped and it went OB, Billy. Oh, that is such a tough break. They only get one shot. Well. Let's see what the other team has to offer as they're a little bit closer to the green. Well, I believe that they may still be out and Melinda is gonna have to come off. That's in on two, out on three, and Melinda's gonna be throwing four. And they were all, this group was one stroke apart and the group uh, prior to them, Victoria and Nathan, they were at even coming into 15. This group was at two over and one over. So it could still anybody's ball game, but Victoria and Nathan had a horrible time here on 16. And they're trying to determine now. And we've got the marshal with this group, which is a benefit. Yeah, it's a great that he's here. There seems to be a little bit of debate on whether or not it hit inbounds. And they have, uh, they have sort of overruled marshal and let him know that it, it did hit there. Now we're going to let Melinda try to get up. This is their fourth shot. Okay, routine shot. It looks like she's playing it safe and well done. Little card of five. Now we'll get around for Ryan and Colleen shot. She's up. Great shot. E easily played for a three. Well, that's going to give them a distinct advantage. They're going to stay at one over. And I believe they're going to have as much as a two-stroke lead here with two to go. Well, there's Ryan, and that's a huge three at this stage of the game, Liz. Oh, yeah, they're almost finished for this round. They don't have many holes to play. Well, they had just doubled the hole before, felt horrible coming in here. And uh, Michael and uh, Melinda were only two over coming in here. That five's going to send them to four over, and that is a huge part for Ryan and Colleen. They're going to stay one over. That's a three-stroke advantage with two to go, and we know that Victoria and Nathan had some troubles. We're going to get around now to hole 17. Well, here's Colleen on the tee. This is hole number 17, Billy. It's a par three, 245 feet. Well, that's well, a good-looking shot, Liz. Looks like it caught a little bit of brush, but it's still going to work out good. I believe she's still in the fairway. Well, they should be able to get up and down as long as Ryan can throw a shot that'll sit, get them another par, and that's how they're going to win this thing is to par out. Yeah, you bet, Billy. Melinda Apton's on the pad now. She sends one up in the air. Well, that's a much better angle. She's kept it away from the woods. Oh, she's sitting pretty. She's real pretty, Billy. Well, she's got it up there for an opportunity for a putt. She was asking her partner for a chest bump on the last hole, so that he wouldn't give it to her. That's why she missed the putt. Oh. Okay, we're to the approach shot here on hole number 17. Ryan Gavlik, all he has to do is get it under there for a par to maintain their lead. Well, It's know, a tricky shot, Billy. He is a competitive guy. I don't know if he's going to be laying this up. He'd be smart to lay it up. He had her tap it in and get the opportunity to drive on a big bomb hole to finish it. Absolutely. If he's playing smart, which looks like he tried to. It looks like he tried to play it smart, but he did suffer in tree nick and go down that hill. Well, we thought Melinda had a great shot. You can see how good it is because Ron's partner's making his way over. They've heard the most dreaded words in golf with. You're still out, guys. This is All a right. huge pop for Colleen. Absolutely, it's up to Colleen now to stand up for her team and make this putt. These oh, two working well as a pair. That is a huge oh, putt right there, and that three could give them the victory. There's one hole to go, and they've got a distinct advantage with Ryan going on the tee, and now with Michael coming in to tap in this beautiful drive by Melinda. She's going to tee on the next hole, and this is a 455-foot par three on flat ground, a distinct advantage, I'd say, for Ryan. Look at that drive, would wow, you? Wow, that is a great shot by Melinda. That team taking a huge sigh of relief as they can step into the next hole. Right, we're going to try to follow them up the hill and get to 18. Well, Liz, this is the closing hole, and it is one tough battle all day long. Oh, yeah, this hole is 455 feet, and there are these huge patches of 
very punishing rough, Billy. There's thorns and prickers, trees, everything. Well, I believe you call it shul back home. That's where the, the term originated. And a distinct advantage again for Ryan to be on the tee, just to try to get him down. If they can get a three here, they're gonna win the World Mixed Doubles Championship right here at Palmer Park on the first day of the competition. It's nice to get a world championship under your belt before singles competition begins. Oh, absolutely. There's only so many people that want this to happen. Well, you know, this drive is gonna demand, I seen Ryan thinking about a roller and that is a high risk shot because if you get in some of this shul, it could take two shots just to get out and you're only trying to go about 15 feet. Oh yeah, and then now you don't give your partner a chance to perform either then, Billy. Well, he's gonna weigh it up. A simple air shot here of about 300 feet, his partner has got plenty of distance. She'd be able to get up and down and they could take the par, but we'll see. He may not know exactly how far ahead he is. He's worried about this group in front. They all came off of Basil Morela at seven under par. So they're not exactly sure what's going up there. Who's that, Michael? Oh, well, who, oh, look, you look, he on the tee now after one incredible drive by Melinda Apton on that last hole, Liz. Oh, yeah, she's got to have some confidence walking into this drive. I don't think she has anything to worry about. Well, now, it's a super long hole, but she's obviously got the distance that she just pimped that 245-foot hole. Oh, yeah, and the important goal here is to keep it out of the shul. If you can get it anywhere, if you can get it two-thirds of the way down the fairway. If you're out of the shul, you're sitting pretty for your approach. Well, they're down by two. I say that they've got the distinct advantage, but if she puts it smart and in the fairway, and then Ryan does try that roller, all Michael's got to do is put it up there for the par, and we could have a huge two-stroke swing right here. These are incredible finishing holes here at Palmer Park. It looks like Melinda's ready. All right, here it comes. She has it's got a lot of speed lift. on it. Oh, and it hits the second pile of shul, and it is it stayed inside that shul. That is not good, Liz. We, we looked at that, and that is very dense. And let's see what okay. Ryan's going to do. And he oh, is, looks like he's lining up for that roller, Billy. This is a very dangerous shot. This is dangerous. He, he should be realizing that his teammate just threw into a large pile of shul. Or his competitor. It's a good-looking move, though. I'm liking yeah, it right might, now, This Liz. might just work out. It's staying in the middle. Well, that grass is slowing it down enough. I don't think it's going to be able to get back over to the shul. And can you say center cut, Liz? <laughs> I tell you, and it's still going, Billy. Absolutely beautiful. What does Billy know? Talk about yeah. getting jiggy with it. How about just dropping the hammer down and just closing the door? That's Ryan Gavlet with a huge roller. And that's a good chance right there for Colleen to throw it under the basket and give themselves a world title. <laughs> All right, Michael Falconio here. He's got a tough shot. I mean, he has to go for it if he wants any chance at winning this thing. Well, or even pushing a playoff or getting anything back. But. There's, there's nothing to go for. I mean, he can come out and look. He's in there at a point to where he's going to try and articulate it down the fairway. His best bet would be to come out and maybe try to get about 40 feet. This is another scary shot. He's got a little bit, and he might even be considered putting it on the ground. But there's nothing left. This is their last hole. They're down only by two. He sends a big done. roller up. Looks like a. That's oh, a it's, great it's, shot that's a great out of shot there. out of there. Absolutely, it's just going to go in front of the other team's drive. But that's incredible. Well, Melinda will have an opportunity at a bomb putt, and that is a great job by a local of knowing the shul. Okay, here we go, Colleen Thompson. Here, she, all she has to do is play safe. She doesn't have to run this. Just put it right under the basket. Wow. This is off of Ryan's amazing roller drive. And that's exactly what she's done. She's left him well about done. a 13-footer, and I believe that will secure the world championship as Victoria and Nathan had a horrible time on hole number 16, took a seven, and they did card this, but that got them to four over, and it's just not going to be enough as they're going to end up at one over, Colleen and Ryan. Melinda Apton now after a great out-of-trouble shot. This would be an incredible three, Liz. It's up in the air. It's got a chance. Oh, just it missed could it. Be it though. And it looks like... All right, Brian Gavlik's got a little tap-in putt and maybe he can have himself a world title. Well, we believe he's gonna win that world title. He's gonna shoot one over par, which means they're gonna end up eight over par here. And that's pretty good considering the amount of danger on this course, the length and the alternate shot format. All right, he's got a little tap-in. Seems to be having a little trouble figuring out who's going. Well, I think he was feeling that he was going to be the champion and maybe wanted to take that last putt. And, Easy putt, pretty routine. And the local boy didn't give him that love. He still wants to take him out. <laughs> Here's Michael Falconio. 
And Michael's one of the favorites to win this week in the singles division. All right, easily made his putt. Well, that's the lead card from mixed doubles. Sunday afternoon here in Rochester, New York. This is the beginning of the 2011 Am and Junior World Championships. Let's get on over now. We'll tally up the cards and we'll let you talk to the winners. Well, you can see the competition is going to be stiff all weekend long. And these are amateurs. Anything can happen. I love it. On the last nine holes, it's up, it's down. It's anybody's ball game. Liz Carr, lucky enough to run down the winners after the matches. Let's get over to Liz right now for the I'm on Cloud Nine post-round interviews. All right, well, we've been able to track down the 16 and under junior world champions. We're standing here with, this is now his fifth world title in doubles, Andrew Coggins, and his partner today, who is a two-time world champion, Brock Dowell. However, this is the first time they have ever joined forces, and together they brought home another world championship. How are you guys doing? Awesome. How's it feel, yeah? Feels great. Awesome. So how, how many strokes did you beat your competition by? One. One stroke, that's it, huh? Kind of a narrow margin. Yeah. Did you guys battle it out at the end? Yes, we oh, did. Yeah. Had to come back by seven strokes to win. Yeah. Had to come back by seven strokes. That's huge. And you guys played alternate shot here at Parma Park. How'd that go? Well, I mean, first hole, uh, my dad was saying let Andrew drive and I sh and I put it, but I never listened to him. I just did my sidearm, kind of had like a 45 footer uphill. He missed it. I just dropped it in. And then right after that, he drove, I birdied, he drove, I birdied, he drove. I so you guys found the rhythm. You found yeah. the rhythm that worked for you, because I hear you guys shot the hot round for this course. Yep. In this event. Well, congratulations to both of you. Thanks. Keep racking up some world titles. There you have it. Here's our 2011 16 and under junior world champions. All right, well, we've been able to track down this year's world championship mixed doubles partners. We're standing here with Colleen Thompson and her partner, Ryan Gavrick. You guys are out of what? Where are you guys from? Uh, Chicago, Lamont, Illinois. Illinois. Lamont, Illinois. Lamont, Illinois. All right, so you guys had a little bit of a trip to get here, huh? Yeah, about hour drive. <laughs> yeah, is it worth it so far? Absolutely. Very worth it, yeah. <laughs> got course. here early in the week, practiced, and got, got to, to play see all the courses. Right. They're all oh, incredible, very, cool. very different than out by yeah, us. Yeah, well, so. these guys had a hot round this morning at Basil Morella Park. They shot seven down. Three other groups shot seven down. But you guys were able to hold it all the way through this course. Yeah, what did you think of this course? Did you guys find trouble? It's brutal. It's uh, tough. Alternate shots a lot different as well. Cause it's like mm -hmm. if I got to drive, I mean. <laughs> yeah, did you feel a lot of pressure with the alternate shot? Absolutely, definitely. Because it comes up to the putt. And it's like you don't have another shot behind you. So it's kind of yeah. just like, all right, got to pull this together and make it work. So. Yeah. and Two people to disappoint in alternate right? shot. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, coming down the stretch here on hole 15, you guys doubled that hole, double bogeyed that hole. Yeah. yeah. Were you guys Get nervous at that point? Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> we were a little nervous. We knew we were one off of the lead, and then we doubled that, so. Yeah, and you had guys on the second card to worry about, too. Right, very nerve wracking. We knew what they had on the second cards. We were just like, we had no idea what they were at, so we were kind of uh, a little shaky there. <laughs> okay, so you guys were able to come back, and uh, your strategy coming into the other holes after, after doubling? Just clear it out of your head, clear every other hole out of your head, every other shot that you've taken out of your head, because this is all that matters right now. It's just. Play it Stay safe, play, play it, it up. Play Start safe, threes. get your threes. Exactly. See what happens in the scorecard? Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, well. Like, don't go for the deuce. I'm like, all right. <laughs> play, <laughs> play safe, safe. Play keep it. it. Keep, keep the world championship. All right, guys, well, you are the world champions. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank and thanks for coming much. to Rochester, yeah, New thank York. You thank you very much. <laughs> well, the first day is coming to an end here at the 2011 amateur and junior world championships. You can see behind us, this is the mixed doubles field. Oh yeah, we got some world champions on our hands now, Billy. Well, the mixed doubles, Ryan Gavrick, Colleen Thompson out of Illinois, they're your new world champions. Absolutely, juniors 19 and under, Steve Jacobs and Kyle Chapman. New world champions and used to here in this 16 and under, this is the fifth time Andrew Coggins is the doubles world champion and his partner Brock Dowell the second time. Both those guys are well under 16, so we'll see what they do next year. But that's a big weekend for those guys. 13 and under world champions are Drew Mosley and Mackenzie Eckenberger. Good job, you two. Well, congratulations to all those guys. Now, be sure to stay tuned all week long to PDJ.com as the lovely Liz Carr and myself will be bringing you action. We'll be calling holes for you, and we'll be showing you the sights here from the 2011 Am and Junior World Championships. We hope you've enjoyed this.